Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Metro Television News coming to you live from uh, Ikwa Wahima Studios here at North Ridge in Accra. Coming up in the next 60 minutes. Coalition picket today in protest against the Auditor General's failure to surcharge indicted public institutions and personnel. An exercise the Internal Audit Agency has described as needless. Sanctions for unregistered SIM cards begin today, September 5. What next for defaulters? How does the sanction measure work and its cost on business, including the telcos and utility institutions? Plus, Kenya's Supreme Court upholds William Ruto's win in presidential election. The Coalition for Democratic Accountability and Inclusive Governance, also known as Citizen Coalition, is currently picketing in Accra in demand of a more proactive Auditor General. The pressure group declared today Red Monday, marching through principal streets of the national capital from 8 a.m. beginning at the Air Force Sutherland Children's Park and petitioned the Auditor General's office to demand it uses its power of surcharge indicted institutions and personnel. The 2021 Auditor General's report released recently cites several public institutions and personalities for engaging in infractions, costing the country several millions of cities. The coalition comprising over 30 CSOs is therefore mounting pressure on the Auditor General to act now to save the country's purse. Our correspondent Shadrach Odami Ejari is on the grounds to bring us the latest situational report. Good afternoon to you, Shadrach. Good afternoon, Annie. So we, we are here, we are currently on the Independence Square Street um, where people are from the co uh, Citizens Coalition will be massing up for the Auditor General's office to receive uh, their petition, which is calling on the Auditor General's office to surcharge persons who have been found culpable, for want of a better word, in the Auditor General's report. There has been some monies which have been said to have gone down the drains or into some few persons' pockets, which um, is um, massing up Not to about $17 million. And then that would have to be retrieved from persons here. But um, I'm seeing Dr. Kojo Pupini here from the CDD. Let's get closer to him. And then I will find out from he um, also joined by Dr. Akoto Ampa, who is also the lead for the um, president, Nana Dodanko Kufado's legal team. So um, most of them are here, but we'll try and then uh, find one, any of the uh, persons or leadership of the uh, demonstration to speak to. They would be telling us why um, we are seeing today's um, demo. Let me get closer to them, and then we'll find out from um, most of them. What Lawyer, good afternoon. Welcome to Metro News. Uh, we are seeing you here today. You are here on the ticket of which of the CSOs? Oh, I'm an individual interested uh -huh, as a citizen. I'm interested. I'm part of the coalition in my capacity as a, a citizen. But I also am part of one Ghana movement, which is part of the coalition. I'm also uh, part of the Human Rights and Governance Center, which is also part of the coalition. So I wear three hats, citizen, human rights and governance center, and one Ghana movement. But um, we, are, we, are, we are seeing you here joining the um, demonstration um, today, calling on the Auditor General to search out persons um, that have been listed in his report. That aside, what other things have prompted today's demonstration? Yes, yeah, so he wasn't doing enough. He has issued one, only one, disallowance and search charge so far. So we are alarmed that, hey, Domlevo issued over 100, and he recovered about between 66 and 70 million Ghana cities. So why won't uh, Mr. Uh, Johnson and Kuyama SCA do the same? Uh, because the Supreme Court has already given its approval in the auditor, the Occupy Ghana case. So we thought that, no, we need to come and support the Auditor General to motivate him, to invigorate him, and to push him that he should go high, he should go full nyanya on issuing disallowance and set charges. Yeah. 
Thank you so much, sir. So that was um, lawyer Martin Pebu. Um, let me go to senior um, Samson. In the morning, I spoke to him on the demonstration, and then we are almost at the Independence Square. But le let me ask you again. Um, who the call for the Auditor General to um, search out persons and claim those monies um, be a one-time remedy for us not going to the IMF and um, possibly revive our economy from collapsing? The evidence is there. It's so clear. If in 2021 alone, the Auditor General's own finding is that 17 million has not been accounted for misplaced, misused, or stolen, and we are going to IMF for 16 million, it's a no-brainer. He writes in his report that this money, recover it, that money, recover it. Question, who should recover it? He has been given the power to recover the money. Surcharge, disallow, surcharge, disallow, surcharge. We just can't understand what is going on. Johnson Ekuamwa Esiedu should tell us why within a very short time, Domelevo issued over 100 surcharges. He got us some 67 million Ghana cities. He has been in office for how long now? Why has he issued one? We just want him to do his work. The work that the Constitution says is you do. The work that Occupy Ghana went to court, Supreme Court, and the court made orders that he should use the surcharge regime. We don't have to be going to court. It's not necessary. If he does a surcharge, somebody is not happy, then they rather will go to court. When Osafomafu was surcharged, when Sylvester Mensah were surcharged, and they were not happy, they went to court and they won. Just issue the surcharges. You will win some, you will lose some. It's as simple as that. The surcharge is just a piece of paper. But, but in the morning, piece of paper. In the morning, one senior lecturer from the University of Ghana made mention of the fact that um, the former um, uh, Auditor General was asked to proceed on a leave, and that might be um, deterring the current one from moving forward to say, I'm surcharging A, B, and C um, persons. Do, do you uh, um, buy into that notion? The Auditor General is an independent constitutional office. Independent. It's just like the Electoral Commission. Okay? Or the Electoral Commission members, the commissioners. They are independent. Okay? The Constitution guarantees their independence. It's just like the courts. The judges are independent. So if it is the case, and I doubt, if it is the case, many people are saying that maybe he's scared. What is he scared of? And if that is what it is, then he's not fit for that office. He ought to be bold and do what the law commands him to do. The Citizen Coalition, Occupy Ghana, have done enough. You and I were on the streets this afternoon, not because we are jobless, not because we don't have work to do. We have work to do. So why should it take us to be on the streets to ask him to do the things that he is supposed to do? Okay? We have spoken about the fact that as Occupy Ghana has done the calculation from 2016 to 2020, his own report shows that we have lost 48 billion Ghana cities. I asked you earlier, Imagine we were able to recover half of that money. If he issues this discharge, uh, discharges, it is possible we can recover about half of it. And then we will not need to uh, possibly go back to the IMF. It's not go back to the IMF. It will be it will be unnecessary. Great. 2021. His report finds not you saying it, not me saying it. His report finds and he writes. 17 billion we are going to the imf right now for what 16 billion
Uh-huh. We said uh, E-Levy is a panacea, right? Yeah. E-Levy was supposed to get a hammer. My friend told me just a while ago, E-Levy was targeted to get us about 7 Six, billion. 6.5, yeah. yeah. So, so if E-Levy is a solution by taxing us, how about the 17 billion that people have stolen in the office, sure. misused? How about the 48 billion? All right, we don't need to go to the IMF. In any case, this is the constitution. It is the supreme law of Ghana. In any case, this is the order of the Supreme Court of Ghana. Disobeying the orders of the Supreme Court of Ghana is a high crime. It can get you up to 10 years in jail and then make you ineligible for office as an elected official or as an appointee. You could also get into contempt. In fact, if you are president or you are vice president, it is grounds for you. We just want him to do his work. Some calls by members of the coalition there. Let's now turn to our video and find out some of the surcharges by the previous Auditor General. Now, Senior Minister Yao Safumafu entered into an agreement with Kroll Associates UK Limited in 2017. This was done using a single source procurement procedure. By September 2018, over $1 million equivalent to 4.86 million CDs was paid to the company. The then Auditor General, Daniel Yao Domelevo, demanded for proof of work done by Kroll Associates UK. Daniel Domelevo flagged some procurement infractions. Now, Daniel Domelevo's surcharge against the senior minister to pay the money back because he's unable to show evidence of work being done. The one million surcharge was struck out by an Accra High Court presided over by Justice Efia Sewa Asaribuchi after the senior minister took the matter there. Yao was subsequently asked to proceed on legal allegations of age cheating. Now, the National Communications Authority has announced some punitive actions against users who have not registered their SIM cards. This new move is expected to take effect from today, Monday, September 5, 2022. The small in this report. Ever since the deadline for the ongoing SIM re-registration exercise was extended, registration centers have witnessed low turnout. The National Communication Authority at the time announced some punitive measures to ensure Ghanaians register for their SIM cards before the September 5 deadline, according to a statement signed by the authority's Director General. Outgoing calls and data services for a sequential batch of numbers will be blocked for two days weekly on a rotational basis starting from September 5. These measures, according to the statement, shall exclude blocking of text messages to give defaulting subscribers the opportunity to initiate registration if they so wish. Subscribers who fully register their SIM card within the period will only be unblocked by the mobile network operator after the 48 hours time frame. The authority further asked the mobile network operators to liaise with the Electricity Company of Ghana, Ghana Water Company and other service providers to ensure that their data-only SIMs are registered duly. The Director General also directed mobile network operators to configure their systems to facilitate the use of passports for non-resident Ghanaians until December 31, 2022. We've been joined via Zoom by the Deputy Director of the Consumer and Corporate Affairs of the National Communications Authority, Kwame Jan, to shed more light on this. Good afternoon to you. Now, kindly explain to us how these sanctions are going to be enforced and applied. Hello, Mr. Jan, we can hear you. Hello, Mr. Kwame Jan. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Kwamija, good afternoon to you. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. So um, essentially, mm -hmm. what, what we've been doing is that, you, might, we, you recall that when the Minister for Communications announced the extension of the exercise on July 31, 
she mentioned that it was conditional and that the NCA was going to come out with the, the requisite punitive actions to, to guide uh, the process. So after engaging with MNOs a few times, we came out with the instruction that we issued in a press release that came out yesterday. Um, and among other things, we are saying that effective today, um, as a matter of fact, it's been going on for a while where when you make a phone call, you get an IVR notification that reminds you of the fact that you have to register your SIM card. Now, what, what is go what's going to happen from today onwards is the fact that the MNOs are going to group subscribers who have not completed their registration into different groupings. So that means that if you've done stage one by linking your, your Ghana card with your SIM card through 404 hash, but having gone on to do stage two, you are considered as having not completed your, your registration. So those who have finished their registration, having done stage one and stage two, are the people uh, uh, who are going to be impacted by this directive. And what this means is that effective today, if you're not in the, you may not be in the first group, maybe not second, but you could be third or fourth group. You will experience two hours of non-service, uh, two days of two days, I beg your pardon, of non-service on the networks. And in that window, you cannot have any 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 activity on that window. Except, of course, you want to go and then reset your SIM card. Then um, from 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 Wednesday, those who have done stage one and no stage two will be added to this cohort, who also will be also be, will be blocked for a period of two two days until the end of the month. Then come when when the month ends and starting first October, if you've done just stage one and not, not having completed your registration, or you have done nothing at all, your number will be taken off the network. At, at which stage you have a period of uh, six months to have your number back. We just want to ensure that people turn up to register as you've been asking them to do over the past um, uh, ten or so months now. Now, uh, you, you sometime in August said that government must provide the National Identification Authority with more resources to ensure the successful registration of persons who are willing but yet have not registered. Do you think these sanctions are fair, especially against persons who, although have tried, but have not been able to get a Ghana card? Well, the, I don't want to get so much into the, into, the, into the space of the NIE, but what we are doing is that we know that the NI has put in place certain measures to have people register. If you recall, when the the extension was announced back back in back in uh, no, before the extension that was announced in uh, in 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 March, the NI actually deployed people at various stages to register people. As soon as the extension was announced, every, everyone left there. And mind you, these are people who were being paid to be there to, re to register people. So once that that had happened, and I had no option but to move from there. Now. It's possible that people with genuine reasons why they don't have their Ghana card yet. That's something that I'm sure the NIA can, can, can address in due time. But from, our, from where we sit, there are about 63 or 64 percent of people who have done registrations with stage one. Just about 42 of them have done stage two. And we are saying that the 20 percent, for example, why have, why have they not done stage two yet? And again, just to, to also bring, bring in the fact that we want to ensure that we, we finish this exercise and as many people are given the chance to register, the various exemptions that we've identified, we've, 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 talk, we've talked to the various institutions that are concerned to ensure that those ones are addressed. But we believe that once you have your Ghana card, once you have, you want to actually go on to register, those who are able to get their cards, we urge them to register. Based upon what is going to happen from this month, I believe that uh, in due course, the ministry would announce what happens to those people who may, uh, who ha for some reason or the other, are not able to register. Now, uh, Mr. John, if you find yourself um, in a room with people who are yet to register their SIM cards, what will you tell them? It's a <laughs> very interesting question. The, what I'll be asking is, why haven't you registered your SIM card yet? Okay, um, and I guess urge everyone to go ahead and register your SIM card. If you've done the star force before hash and linked up your SIM card with your Ghana card, you're not done yet. You are just, you are just like the person who has done zero. So from, from, from 1st October, if you have not done stage one and stage two, we are just as if the same person who has done as you. And we urge people, go ahead and register your SIM cards. Go ahead, link your SIM card with your Ghana card. Download the GH self, uh, SIM self app on the, on the Google Play Store, register yourself, or go to your MNO uh, uh, shops or find an MNO agent and register your SIM card. Because indeed, after this month, you are likely to lose your SIM card for not registering your SIM card. Mm. Deputy Director of the Consumer and Corporate Affairs of the National Communications Authority, Kwame John, thank you very much.
Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Chamber of Telecommunications, Ken Ashikbe, says although the introduction of the punitive measures announced by the National Communication Authority will affect their profit and the collection of the electronic levy, the measure is necessary to get more Ghanaians to register for their SIM cards. Not only would it affect business, it would okay. affect for every SIM card that you take out and the person cannot make a call. Right. The CST, the com you know, communication service tax, will be affected. Right. For every SIM card that has e levy also on it, if you take it out, the e levy that should come would also be affected. So sure. there's a potential sure. to affect both business of the telcos, but also, most importantly, at this particular time when government is talking about shortfalls in taxes, there's an, a, a potential for it to affect that as well. Right. But that, yes, so that could could happen if people don't register. Right. So the, but the most important thing is to encourage people to register. Right. The policy maker, the Minister of Communication herself, does not intend that anybody loses uh, has, has, his or her SIM card. Neither does the NTE also intend that. You should also bear in mind that every for every SIM card, the CST that is paid on it, for every SIM card that is, has mobile money, there's e-levy that is going to be paid on it. So all of those things could have implement, implement, uh, implications for our physical policy. So the intention of all parties is not to let people lose their SIM cards. The okay. challenge is that between the time when the minister announced the extension on the 31st of July to the 18th of August, the numbers who were registering had declined by 98 percent yeah so it, there's some definitely you have people who do not have the ghana card that what should be done to make sure that they get the ghana card there are people who have the ghana card but have issues that cannot register all of those have to be fixed but definitely we need to get people to change their behavior and get them registered Joining us via Zoom is private legal practitioner Bobby Banson. Uh, good afternoon to you, Mr. Banson. Hello, Mr. Banson. Good, good afternoon. And, um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Loud and clear. Now, sometime in August, at a press conference organized by the minority addressed by Ningo Pram Pram MP and deputy ranking member of the Communications Committee in Parliament, uh, Sam George, uh, he said that the minority will use every legal means to force the NIA and the Communications Minister to heed to their call of not blocking unregistered numbers. Uh, can subscribers take legal action against the NIA and government if these sanctions are applied? Well, I, I, I should think that there would be a cause of action. Okay, first and foremost, the directive by the NCA for subscribers to link their SIM card to their Ghana, Ghana card is founded in law. So there's a law that backs that directive. Now, the issue is whether or not it, 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 the implementation has been practical or will be practical so far to warrant the sanctions at this stage. Now, you, we are all aware that the requirement is that you must be issued with a Ghana card. The Ghana card, as we have it, is not issued by the NTA. It's issued by the NIA, which is a completely different authority. And so if a subscriber or a, a, a SIM card owner has applied to the NIA, has evidence that he or she has gone through all the requirements to be issued with a Ghana card, but due to logistical but due to logistical challenges, that person has not been issued with the NIA card. Then that person may have a cause of action to go to court to say, listen, I am being punished due to no fault of mine. I have applied for the national identification card. I have not been issued. And so the NTA should be restrained from disconnecting my SIM card because I have not intentionally or willfully flouted the law. And it will be a very interesting thing because the right to communication may be a human right where someone would want to go to the human rights court to have same enforced. Now, what advice will you give to the telecoms to ensure they are not caught up in such situations? Well, the, the, I, I, I listened to the Chamber of, of the Telecommunications and they set up uh, their own contracts or agreements with their subscribers. They must give them at least 48 hours or so before they take any such step. 
And so there could be, if the telecoms do not give their subscribers these 48 hours, and they proceed to disconnect their lines or enforce these sanctions as directed by the NCA, then those subscribers would have a cause of action against the telecoms. But if the telecoms comply with the 48-hour um, uh, notice period, and they, after that they go ahead to disconnect based on the directive of the NCA, then the subscriber's cause of action can only be against the NCA, I should think and not the telecoms. The telecoms may be joined to the action for, for as lawyers would say, for, for uh, as nominal defendants, because whatever orders or directives by the court would have to be implemented by the telecom. So it, it seems a very interesting legal situation. Right. Bobby Banson is private legal practitioner. Very much appreciated time. Thank you very much indeed. We'll take a break here. We'll return more with some more stories. We'll take you to Kenya when we return. Welcome back. Good to have you with us. Now, that video you saw before the break was a festival in Gomorrah in, in the central region. We'll bring you more of that later. But before that, William Ruto is the president-elect of Kenya. This is because the Supreme Court has dismissed Raila Odinga's challenge to the presidential election results. The Chief Justice rejected all of the arguments of the petitioners. We will be speaking to our correspondent in Kenya, but first, here's a quick refresher of what has transpired so far. The final orders made by the courts. This is a unanimous decision of the courts and we make the following orders. One, the presidential election petition number E005 of 2022 as consolidated with the presidential election petition numbers E001, 2, 3, 4, 7, and 8 of 2022 are hereby dismissed. As a consequence, we declare the election of the first respondent as president-elect to be varied under Article 143 of the Constitution. This being a matter cutting across the public interest, we order that each party do bear their own costs. It is so ordered. And finally, the court has asked me to also acknowledge, although we do it in the long draft, the enormous contribution made by council uh, in these uh, proceedings um, and also the only way the council or the advocates and parties conducted themselves they remained seated throughout the proceedings There is now about 6,000 personnel of the National Builders Corps, NAPCO, whose programs ended in August 2022, were encouraged to apply for U-Start grants to enable them to get entrepreneurial skills training and subsequently employment. Their concerns, however, has been about what exactly the U-Start is about. Here's a news desk report. The U-Start initiative is an entrepreneurial policy by the government of Ghana under the Ghana Employment Agency, formerly the National Board for Small-Scale Industries. It was rolled out in April 2022 after a successful pilot in Kumasi to remedy what the Minister of Finance, Ken Oforiata, said was a looming, unacceptable level of unemployment among the youth post-COVID-19. The ambitious program is mandated to build an entrepreneurial nation and creates at least 1 million jobs for the youth in the next three years. That is from 2022 to 2025. According to the policy paper of the Youth Start Program, government intends to commit about 10 billion Ghana cities over the next three years towards job creation. This will be achieved using part of the proceeds from the electronic transaction levy and other funding sources such as the World Bank, IFC, MasterCard, Select Private Finance Initiatives, and other development finance institutions. Tony Miva Zoom is the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Enterprises Agency, Kosi Yankee I. 
Good afternoon to you, ma'am. Now, the Youth Start program is in its sixth month. Since commissioning, what is the progress so far? So thank you very much. Um, I think the Ghana Enterprises Agency has been set up to support MSMEs and to support um, entrepreneurs. One of the programs, flagship programs, that the government is um, working on is the Youth Start Intervention. And the Youth Start is to support the youth in trying to create employment. And currently we've done the pilot phase, which was launched nationwide. And some of the beneficiaries have received the supports that were, they, were, they were supposed to. I know some who have built poultry farms, some who have also done um, aquaculture with it. And it's ongoing. So we've completed the pilot stage and we're looking at moving on to the main implementation stage. Now, we know NAPCO trainees have been encouraged to sign onto the program. How many of them have signed onto the Youth Start? It hasn't been opened up for people to start uh, sign on. But I think the Youth Start intervention is for all Ghanaian youth who have been, who need support, those who want to start their own businesses, those who have ideas and want to implement those ideas. And so the work we are doing at Ghana Enterprises Agency is to ensure that the youth who want to support, who want to be supported, who have ideas, will be supported to grow. In our last interview with a spokesperson for the trainees, uh, he mentioned most of them have little knowledge on how to sign onto the program. Uh, what is your outfit doing to ensure these trainees are well informed? Um, I think that um, the conversation we should have at, at the Ghana Enterprises Agency, um, NAPCO doesn't fall under us, but our training program, um, trainees and national service persons, all Ghanaian youth, have the opportunity to sign up. Like you rightly said, most Ghanaian youth have an idea of what entrepreneurship is. So how do we ensure we give them full understanding? We also train them and build their capacity and then eventually give them access to some support that would help them grow. You know, um, the Ghana Enterprises Agency has 210 offices across various districts. And as much as possible, people can benefit from that um, interventions of our business advisory centers. In the past, we've also done some work with national service, as well as the NAP, some NAPCO personnel, and they have also benefited from our interventions. Now, my very final question, uh, does government have the capacity to support these trainees and other Ghanaian youth since your initial target is to create one million jobs? I think government has capacity, and that's why government doesn't work alone, but work with private sector. So together, we can achieve it. I don't think it's even an issue of achievement because even those numbers, we should be able to do more. The question is how willing are we all going to work together to ensure the program is a success, both private and, and public sector. But it is possible. We've done more than that in the past four years. We've trained over 640,000 people. We've given access to funding for 300,000 plus people. And that was even interventions done without a clear direction of creating one million jobs. So you can imagine that if we've set that target, it's doable. Now, thank you very much, uh, Mom, Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Enterprises Agency, Kosi Yankee Ai there. Now, the leadership of NAPCO Trainees Association of Ghana has called off the September 6, 2022 intended demonstration with the hope of having their arrears paid before September 15. According to the association, they will revisit their initial plan of picketing around the Jubilee House if payments are not made by the said date. NAPCO was initially supposed to run for three years and was extended for an additional year which ended on September 1st, 2022. The program was aimed at engaging 100,000 young graduates. In the press release signed by NAPCO trainees president, Dennis Opoku Katechie stated that it was quite unfortunate that arrangements for permanent employment for the remaining beneficiaries and the call for payment of the arrears could not materialize before the end of the scheme. He therefore said the association will not relent in its efforts to ensure they get what they deserve. It is on this background that the association will be meeting the Secretariat on Thursday, September 8th for validation and verification timelines, a requirement for the payment of arrears. 
The association further encouraged other trainees with viable business ideas to take advantage of the You Start initiative and advised those who have established a productive relationship with their MIPs to keep following up on them with the hope of chancing on any probable vacancy. The President of the Commonwealth Magistrates and Judges Association, Justice Charles M. Kandiriri, has lamented the many barriers that deny many citizens access to court among member states owing to unmoded laws and financial difficulties among others. To him, there's a need to bridge this barrier to ensure judicial harmony. The theme of this conference is access to justice in a modern world. It is not my intention to unpack the theme in my welcome remarks. I would, however, like to underscore that this theme resonates well with what is going on in most of our jurisdictions. The historical experience of the common law has been that in reality, too many barriers have continued to deny citizens access to the courts. These barriers have been systemic, procedural, <coughs> financial, physical, and cultural. They include the twin problems of delay and backlog, antiquated court facilities, outdated approach to litigation by both judges and lawyers, and insufficiency of funding. Within the thematic structures this, of this conference, you have very interesting topics. There are so many of them, but I have just mentioned a few for your interest mobile courts and virtual courts, digitalizing court systems. Do anti-terrorism laws need to be harsher? Is there sufficient gender equality and diversity in the judiciary? Many more questions will arise during discussions. I'm sure that you will be as excited as I am about the coming four days during which we will have opportunity to consider and exchange ideas and best practices on these issues. The same event, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia says that we must continue to leverage that shared history in the service of those people, bearing in mind the duty that the history imposes on us as actors in that chapter. In this period of unprecedented disruption, it was opposite, it was opposite that we had to turn to the greatest disruptor in modern civilization, digital tools, the great enablers allowed individuals, institutions, and states to carry on with some sense of normalcy. No society can be truly deemed organized if it is not centered on the central foundation of justice. Therefore, I believe that just like all other benefits that accrue to a citizen by mere virtue of birth, State actors must expend every available energy to ensure that justice is available to all. Until very recently, this desire has been subject to very real challenges. Beyond the basic problems of infrastructure, the very ideas of time and space have been impediments to access. How, for example, can a critical witness who is away from the jurisdiction for very valid reasons provide the testimony necessary for the case to proceed? The advancements in technology mean that we do not have to be physically present somewhere to perform a task there. We can reduce the man hours required to perform any task, supercharge the efficiency of the institutions and empower individuals at all levels of society. Justice systems in the Commonwealth and around must, in my estimation, fully embrace the power of digital tools in order to boost access to
Hello again. Poverty is on a steady rise in the country. More Guineans are getting poorer now than ever before. Now, per the latest figures from the Ghana Statistical Service, more than 46% of Guineans are multidimensionally poor, bringing to bear the hampering effect of the high cost of living and the skyrocketing inflation is having on people. Let's listen to government statistician, Professor Samuel Inim. In quarter one of 2021, 44.1% of persons were multidimensionally poor. This percentage rose by 2.6 percentage points between the two quarters, increasing from 44.1% in the first quarter of 2021 to 46.7% in the second quarter of 2021. A variance to the headcount poverty is what we call the intensity of poverty. So we captured the extent to which given the 12 indicators that households are deprived of. So in the first quarter, we found that on the average, they are deprived of 47.3% of the items. This marginally reduced in the second quarter of 2021 to 46.6%. So one of the main communication that we put out here is that while we, we saw an increase of about 803,000 persons in headcount poverty between quarter one and quarter two of 2022, the intensity of poverty reduced. One can look at this from a, a positive perspective in the sense that the extent of deprivation reduced from 47.3% to 46.6% over the two. In other business news today, interest rates hit the 30% mark as Treasury securities sold a little above 30% on the domestic primary market as investors focused on the short-term securities in the primary market for pre-pricing pre benefits. From the Bank of Ghana, the 91-day Treasury bill went for 29.04% about 0.44% increase over the previous week. That of the 182 bill traded at 30.22% compared with 29.94% the previous week. The one-year bill, however, sold for 30.01% as against 29.5% the previous week. Singapore-based financial research firm Red, Red Intelligence had stated that the country is presently facing liquidity challenges, a situation causing rising interest rates. The rising interest rates have boosted liquidity on the short end of the market. According to the auction result, government secured 1.774 billion CDs from the sale of the short-term securities, about 2.9% oversubscription. This is the 12th consecutive oversubscription achieved. As usual, the 91-day Treasury bill was the most purchased as investors bought a total of 1.448 billion CDs. This was followed by the 182-day 218.66 million CDs and the 364-day bill 109.41 million CDs. Also, all the bids tended were accepted. Data Bank Research had reported that investor interest in Treasury bills continue to soar as they take advantage of rising interest rates in the Treasury market. This has been And that's it for business. My name is Kenneth Jesse. It's 50 past midday in the Ghanaian capital, Accra. My name is Phil John Kwarte. The president of the nation's football governing body, Keto Kriko, is expecting the new football season to be very exciting, especially the Ghana Premier League. He's been speaking at the launch of the new football season here in the nation's capital. Last season's Ghana Pre Premier League was very exciting. And this season is going to be super exciting. Because each of the 18 clubs are ready. Each of the 18 clubs are well prepared, and each of the 18, 18 clubs are ready to fight for that target of envy. That is to be crowned as the Ghana Bet Power Premier League champions. Our current league champions are Krobia Kumasi Asante Kotoko. I'll use this opportunity to say thank you to Kotoko for the show of class and for being 
our champions from the previous season or the season just gone by. The new season promises to be exciting because all the other 17 clubs would want to wrestle the title from Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Through the kind courtesy of Bet Power, each of the 18 clubs would have an equal playing field to show their quality, to fight for the trophy. And for those of you who are very much interested in what will be at stake at the end of the season, obviously, the Bet Power Premier League will be at stake. Everybody will want to take that trophy home. The winner will also take home 300,000 Ghana cities cash, 200,000 cities will go to the runner-up, and 80,000 will go to the second runner-up. That's your midday sports. My name is Phil John Quarte. Hetty is standing by for the latest in showbiz. Thank you, John. It's now time for entertainment news. The CEO for the Ghana Tourism Development, Kojo Entry, says it is poised to solve the unemployment in the country through the establishment of more tourism sites. He made these remarks when he joined operators of Blackberry Lounge and Sports Bar in Community 17 to officially open it to the public. High Life Artists Kwabna Kwabna in collaboration with the newly opened Blackberry Lounge brought hours of non-stop live band music to music lovers at the grand opening of the lounge. Blackberry Lounge and Sports Bar, the first of its kind at Tema Community 17, is a modern garden type restaurant, lounge, sports bar and event facility. At the grand opening, it hosted over 100 companies and many individuals who enjoyed quality time with Kwabna Kwabna. CEO Ghana Tourism Authority Development describes such move by operators as solving the unemployment in the country. The more enterprises we have in the tourism sector, introducing such initiatives, the more we are on, on, on queue or online to solve the joblessness problem of this country because of the statistics from WTTC and the UNWTO. So that's why we are here, to see this marvelous artifice backed by music. This is what tourism is about, and that's why we're excited to be here tonight. It is designed for young adults and adults who are typically corporate executives, employees of companies and business owners to relax, enjoy good music and food, as well as a variety of cocktails, alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages. And Awusa is the manager for Blackberry and Sports Bar. We'd be expecting them to come here. This place is uh, the best place to come and relax after work. So I would recommend this place, I would recommend this to business owners, entrepreneurs and everyone else to, to come and just relax after work and have best or uh, wonderful time here. Nana Kumia is the managing director for State Transport Company. So very often when these kind of facilities are put up, sometimes it doesn't last too long maybe a year, then it fizzles out. A lot of it has to do with the quality of the service. And if they are able to maintain very high standards in terms of the service, I'm sure this place will last for a long time. Now, former President Barack Obama won the Outstanding Narrator Emmy Award for this, his work on the Netflix documentary, Our Great National Parks, at the Creative Arts Emmy Awards ceremony on Saturday. Higher Ground, Barack Obama and Michelle Obama's production company created the five-part docu-series on national parks and wildlife throughout the world. Obama is the second U.S. president to win an award. Well, that's it for entertainment news on Newsbeat. My name is Harriet Adi. Efua. Thank you very much, Harriet. Up next is international news. UK Foreign Secretary Liz Truss has been named leader of the governing consecutive party and Britain's next prime minister, taking power at a time when the country faces a cost of living crisis, industrial unrest, and a recession. 
after weeks of an often bad-tempered and divisive party leadership contest that paid trust against Rishi Sunak, a former finance minister, the announcement triggered the beginning of a handing over from Boris Johnson. At least three persons have died from floods caused by heavy rains in the Senegalese capital, Dakar. The tragedy took place on Saturday in Yembu North in the department of Ker Massa, Dakar. Commensurating with the victims, President Macky Sall said a delegation was dispatched to the families of the three persons swept away by the latest rains. Ukrainian President Zelensky says counterattack on Russian-held territory in the southern Ukraine has succeeded in wrestling back towns from the Moscow's troops. President Zelensky claimed a series of battlefield successes during his forces counteroffensive against Russia troops in the occupied southern region of Kherson. Zelensky thanked soldiers for taking two settlements in the south along with additional territory in the east. That's how we end the news here on Metro Television. My name is Ifwa Ando. Have a good afternoon.